Qualified Co-workers Men and women who assist elders, overseers, should, in essence, be just as qualified as those who manage and shepherd the church. Here's Gene. This particular principle is really related to the size of a church. It's actually related to the size of the community in which that church exists. And this is the church in Ephesus. It was a large city with a large church spread out through that large city. Now, this is what Ephesus looks like today. It is one of the great archaeological sites uh, in the world. And this is kind of an overview of the main street as you walk down the main street and you can see the library in the distance. This is just, and I'll use a metaphor, a tip of the iceberg, as it were, in terms of the city of Ephesus. Because you can go into the hills around and you'll find they're excavating. This was a huge city, thousands of people. And so the church was huge. And consequently, uh, the elders and the spiritual leaders needed help. And so here is the first real significant reference in the biblical story of the New Testament to deacons. And here he uses the word deacons, and uh, the Greek word is diakonai, and really is translated servants in a lot of places in the New Testament. There's no job description that goes with it, simply servants. It's open-ended. And we're going to see that these servants that were appointed, both men and women, were to help the elders and the overseers, depending on what you call them, the pastoral leaders in the church, to do the work of the ministry and maintain their priorities. As I said, elders or overseers, the word presbyteroi or episcopoi, the plural, refers to those we've just looked at in the previous principle. Elders, overseers who give direction to the church as shepherds. Now, again, Paul says, this is what they should be like. These are the qualifications for those who are co-workers. And when you look at these, they're basically the same as the qualities for the pastors and the leaders. No, notice the qualities. Deacons, likewise, should be worthy of respect, not hypocritical, not drinking a lot of wine, not greedy for money, holding the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience. They must also be tested first. If they prove blameless or having a good reputation, then they can serve as deacons. So the qualities are very important even for those who are co-workers, those who assist, those who help the pastoral leaders. So you see how important it is uh, to have qualified people who are leading, not perfect people, but those who are becoming more and more like Jesus Christ. And these individuals were called to walk alongside uh, the spiritual leaders in the church to help them. Now, as Paul is writing to Timothy, you come across a verse that is kind of puzzling because he says this, wives too must be. Now, why would he refer to the wives of deacons and not the wives of elders or overseers? Because I don't think that's what he's talking about. What he's talking about here, that can be translated women too, or women who are serving as helpers, women who are serving to help alongside men who are serving to help, the spiritual leaders. They too must be worthy of respect, and not slanders, self-controlled, faithful and everything. And then he proceeds to go on with uh, additional qualities for men. But first of all, I just want to call your attention to an example of a woman who probably was in that role. And her name was Phoebe. And Paul mentioned her when he wrote to the Romans in the last chapter. He said, I commend to you our sister Phoebe, who is a what? Servant. A diakonos is the singular. A servant of the church in Sincrea. So you should welcome her in the Lord in a manner worthy of the saints and assist her in whatever matter she may require your help. For indeed, she has been a benefactor of many 
and of me also. Some believe that she actually carried Paul's letter to the Romans all the way from Sancria, which is right close to Corinth, all the way to Rome. Can you imagine the task and how important that task was to help Paul get that letter to the Romans? And it's possible, too, that she was a wealthy woman uh, because there were wealthy women in the New Testament, women like Lydia, the seller of purple, there in Philippi, or Mary, the, uh, the mother of John Mark, who had this huge home in Jerusalem. And consequently, she may have been, uh, she may have inherited a huge amount of money in some way and been a benefactor, but the benefactor may have not necessarily been materialistic or material things, but rather helping generally. So you see a beautiful example of a woman who's in this deacon role. Now, he continues with the qualifications. And here you see the real similarity to the qualifications for the pastors and leaders. Deacons are to be husbands of one wife, again, morally pure, only one woman in their life, managing their children and their own households competently. Same thing he said, basically, to those who are to be the overseers and, and the elders. For those who have served well as deacons acquire a good standing for themselves and great boldness in the faith that is in Christ Jesus. Now, at this point, I want to make a very interesting observation. When you study the history of the development of the church in the book of, book of Acts, for example, on the first missionary journey, Paul and Barnabas, after they had planted churches in various cities, they returned to those cities, and notice what they did. When they had appointed elders for them in every church, and remember that in those days, you only had one church in a city. It hadn't grown and developed like we do in our particular cultural situation. When they had appointed elders for them in every church and prayed with fasting, they committed them to the Lord in whom they had believed. It doesn't say they appointed deacons. Why? Well, let me show you another observation. This is when Paul left Titus in Crete after they had established churches. And what does he say? The reason I left you in Crete was to set right what was left undone, and as I directed you, to appoint elders in every town. And by the way, that picture actually is a picture of Crete, the island of Crete, where there were, and by the way, it was one of the most pagan cities or pagan places in the whole New Testament world at that particular time. And so he was left there to appoint elders. Doesn't say deacons. Why? Why is that true? Well, the fact of the matter is, one of the first official appointments in a church are those who are going to teach the Word of God. That's foundational. And as a church grows, numerically, what's going to happen? These elders, these pastors are going to need help to deal with other issues within the church that are beyond just teaching and preaching and teaching and helping them to grow. So consequently, we see the unfolding of this process. And we see it here in Ephesus because Ephesus was a very large city with a very large church with a number of elders who definitely need assistance in relationship to doing their work and their ministry. So that's a very unique uh, observation and an interesting pattern. Uh, one has to do with supracultural functions that are true anywhere in the world. What are they? To manage that church and to teach the Word of God. Those are specific functions. The deacon role, whether men or women, no job description except one word, servants, to help carry out that ministry and to serve these individuals. So it's a powerful concept. So here's um, uh, a question for reflection and response. 
Though the individuals appointed to assist the apostles in Acts 6 are not identified as deacons, how did their function in the church in Jerusalem illustrate the official deacon role, particularly in helping to meet cultural needs? Well, let me take you back to that situation. Before we read the Scripture, let me simply say this is when the church was first founded in Jerusalem. The apostles were there, the Holy Spirit came, and the church was born. So they were in process of dealing with the founding of the church prior to carrying out of the Great Commission and moving out of Jerusalem to plant churches in other parts of the world. So here's what we read in terms of Acts chapter 6. And I've called this maintaining priorities. The twelve, referring to the apostles, summoned the whole company of the disciples and said, it would not be right for us to give up preaching the Word of God to wait on tables. Now, the background, remember the church was born uh, Jews had come from all over the Roman world for the 50-day celebration in Jerusalem. And there were a lot of women, widows, who came as well. And after the church was born and everybody decided to stay there temporarily, who would run out of money first? The Grecian widows. There was no problem with the Hebrew widows because they had family. They were right there in Jerusalem, in Judea. But what about these women that came all the way from Rome and all the way from Africa? And they're all staying in Jerusalem to see what was going to happen next. Well, they were neglected in the daily di distribution of food. And so what did, and they came to the apostles, uh, these who were leaders, actually, uh, and said to the apostles, our widows are being neglected. And what happened? The apostles said, we can't give ourselves to waiting tables. That's very important. But the apostles said, brothers and sisters, select from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Spirit and wisdom, who we can appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and the ministry of the Word. Now you see the correlation here. The apostles were a prototype of elders in a local church. This was the first local church, and the apostles were there in Jerusalem. And at that point, at this point, we're talking about, they hadn't appointed elders. Everything was growing and unfolding. And later, the churches would be established and planted, not by the apostles per se, who had become permanent leaders, but like Paul and Barnabas, they appointed elders in every church. So they, but the apostles were a prototype because they had to deal with a problem. What was the problem? God had called them to prayer and to preach the Word and to teach the Word, and they said, we can't get distracted from that. And so in essence, what we see in Paul's letter to Timothy, in terms of the church in Ephesus, the same thing was true. The elders who are now over that church, not the apostles, but the elders who are permanent leaders should not be distracted from their priorities. They need help. They need assistance. Waiting tables is important. That's a cultural situation that happened there. But if the apostles had become involved in that, it would have taken, taken them away from their priorities. And so what Paul is saying here in Timothy is that the elders in Ephesus, a large church, they need help. But they need help from qualified deacons, servants who can help them. So it's a very important principle that we see unfolding throughout the biblical story as the church was planted throughout the Roman world. So let me just review the principle. Uh, qualified co-workers, men and women who assist elders, overseers, should in essence be just as qualified as those who manage and shepherd the church.